So, uh, how many people use uh, pantins or some sort of photo sender? Yeah, awesome. I, and you keep it on with you the whole time, mostly? Especially, Especially what? At the store. Yeah, right. You gotta, you gotta hear that when you're walking around the grocery store. But, uh, yeah, for the longest time, I hated wearing my pantin. I'd ascend into the tree and then I'd take it off. And, I don't know, call me silly, but it's actually an awesome device. It's when in use with a system like this, so obviously we all do it. Megan goes up, sends straight up with a foot ascender. No problem. We've all done it. But what that does is it takes, yeah, and just go ahead. But, you know, she's going to tend that, watch that hitch a little bit, because this is another case when, when she's standing on that rope, and putting tension in it, we're changing the diameter, we're shrinking that diameter slightly. And especially if your hand's here and you're bumping the hitch and pretty soon, you know, now your hitch might not grab. So it's one of those things I just, every once in a while I just give it a little touch up, you know, pretty easy. Cool. Uh, so I had, there was a question earlier about why the long eye, uh, why the long eye splice? And we didn't really go over this. <coughs> uh, the, do you know the O ring? Is it at the? I do not. At present? Okay. Yeah. No worries. We uh, didn't really go over this yesterday, but the purpose of slace having this portion that's flexible and the and the long eye splice, like on Megan's rope and on Katie's rope, is so that we can we can bend that sharply. And so this is a great technique for uh, those of you who are not. Um, who have made the transition but you're still used to body thrusting or, or whatever. I use this in trees all the time. It's great for coming back on a limb walk and all that. So we'll call it the add-in prussic. And what we do is we take our, our floating, floating prussic, I think is the correct term. So here's my, my normal system. I'm going to take, take the eye splice off and disconnect. So you obviously have to have your lanyard on it when you're in the tree doing this. But I'm going to push that eye splice through my ring, or in this case the swivel, and clip that back to the bottom hair beater. So now I'm secure, I'm in a loop system, and I can push this prussic away from me so that I can grab with both hands underneath and I don't have to tend slack. Uh, it's a little tough to get that slice through the, um, the swivel, so I need to just put a ring on my bridge to demonstrate this quickly. I didn't prepare it. And they, if you're ever monkeying with your tree motion, you, these knots are very secure, but they're quite easy to break, so you can always swap things out, change your bridge length. This is pretty straightforward here. So just to make the point that you probably need <coughs> to rope on rope, right? You need the ring. What's that? To do it either using the swivel as you showed, or with the ring, but you yeah. rope on rope. Right, yeah, you wouldn't want to run this over just your bridge. Um, you'll notice Katie has, uh, she prefers to climb without the ring, and so you wouldn't, she wouldn't want to set this up just a uh, rope running over her bridge like that. Okay, so I'm back in. So, eye splice through the ring. Clip that to the bottom carabiner. And I've, I've got my loop system, and what that allows me to do is push that prussic away from me so I get both hands underneath here. And now I can body thrust like I normally would. But what happens when I pull on it, so I need I need something to grab on to keep it there. And so you can use a little, Matt had a rope man. You can use a little rope man. I like to use a little prussic as I use it for other things too. So this is just a little 30 centimeter sling and I've got a, uh, this is Ocean Vectran. I have a little binder on there to keep it tight around the carabiner. Let's do a quick six coil. Alright, when I'm in work position as it were, the reason for bending this sharply there is to keep the carabiner as close as possible to where it normally is so that when I'm, you know, work positioning way out here, I don't I don't have to reach way back for it, you know, it's, it's in the same place. But when I want to walk back in on a limb, for example, I can simply push that away with my weight still in the rope, 
Okay, and now that now it stays in place, and now with both hands underneath, I can body thrust with ten slap. So when I get back into my position where I want to work again, I simply grab the coils here, collapse that back, tidy it up, and I can climb away again. So ascending as well. Smaller trees are just, you know, if you're going up and down conifers, <coughs> maybe you've swung over to another conifer and you're working your way up, whatever. Uh, it, it's, it, it's great as well because you can get those long pulls that you're used to in your body thrusting. But you always need to be able to grab that hitch if like a twig gets in it or something. So don't push it too far away from you, especially in this case. But, you know, you know now I'm just body thrusting. You know, we're all used to that action, but I don't have any slack. There's just the sit back, there's just that sit back as the hitch grabs. So really I'm, I'm using, you know, using full arm movement and all that, but at the same time I'm not generating slack either. So particularly in a limb walk, you know, and, you know, like a limb walk might be a little wobbly. We don't want to generate slack, it's a great way to do it. So even with my weight, I just have to pop it over that sewing a little bit. But even with my weight in the in the rope, I can change that to here in uh, different positions. Can you model that? <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll show it again later. And if somebody wants to set this up too and try it, that's cool. So something, as long as I've got that in place, I want to briefly talk about uh, the anti-shock lanyard. I saw someone maybe bought one or they had a few floating around there. And the interesting thing about the lanyard, it's got a screamer in it, so it actuates at a lower peak force. Your saw gets caught in the kerf and it's ripped out of your hands. Sure, we got a bungee. And some of the breakaway lanyards, they just go ee, bang and they break and that's it. Well, this decelerates, if that's the right term, but it absorbs that energy so it puts less force on you and the anchor point and it'll it'll tear away you know gradually over time until if this if it doesn't let go of the saw eventually it'll just come off the end and that's it you lose the saw but there's a chance there that you'll get to keep it but the main thing is it's less force on your body less force on your anchor point which can be pretty scary but there's some interesting things about these uh, there's one model with the carabiner, one model with the ring. So the ring is pretty standard, we all do that, clip it in, clip it out. But this carabiner, you know, obviously you can clip it to different places on your harness. So this gets girth hitched around the handle of the saw. This goes to your, you know, saw, attach your point on your harness, wherever you know is, back in somewhere. And then you're able to, oftentimes with the big saws, if I begin my climbing system, I'll hang the big saw in my ring so that my climbing system is supporting the saw and not me. Um, but there's a there's an interesting <coughs> idea behind the carabiner as well as to keep the saw secured at all times. And so Megan is going to need a chainsaw here. You do? Well, how about I send you up a rope bag? It's it's going to be kind of dull. Um, but if you, if everybody can see, or maybe Megan can, can, can turn a little bit. Yeah, that works. Um, if you grab a bite of rope from between the hitch cord and the hit and the top of the hitch climber, and then she can send that down and pretending that this is. So let's just pretend that this is the chainsaw or any piece of equipment. But with the chainsaw, what I'm going to do, girth hitch that, we'll pretend that this is the handle of the chainsaw. All right. And to keep this secure, 100%, I'm going to clip both carabiners in. And now I can haul that chainsaw. You all good? Now I can haul the saw up to Megan, right? Like, and I'm gonna stand out of the way so I don't get hit in the head if it falls off. So I can haul that up 
and hold on to it to keep it secured. And now she can clip it to her saw link on the back of the harness. Okay. And now it's secured 100% of the time. Right? She, it was always secured. There was no chance of her dropping it. And with that carabiner, she can clip this off anywhere. To your side ring is fine. Yeah. And then the same thing on the way down. She just reverses that action, and she can, I can control it all the way to the ground. So saving on her. Uh, yep. And now I've got it secured. Anybody wants to look at that. I mean, you've already looked at them, but that one, the screw is off. 